The Lambic family of beers are not for everybody. They are wildly unpredictable, not knowing if they want to be a beer or wine. I remember drinking Lambic for the first time, and I was in shock and surprised. Where's the malt and the hops? Wow, that was funky and complex. I don't even know how I would describe this. You see, you won't find any other beer like it. I wanted to try more of it, and I wanted to know more about this complex and unique beer. So who better to learn how Lambic is made than from a brewery that has been making Lambic since 1822. Six generations of pioneers that have succeeded each other. Their brewery has become one of the leading producers of Lambic in the region and in the world. I'm excited to introduce you to the owner and brewer of Lindemans and show you the process of how Lambic is made. So you are the sixth generation owner of Lindemans. When you were growing up, did you have a choice in owning the business? You always have a choice. It was no obligation to follow up my father, my uncle. I lived here in front of the brewery. I grew up there. And when I was a child, well, we played here in the brewery. That was a playground for us, uh, for kids. It was not like it is now. Eh? It was more a smaller brewery, a farm brewery. Then we, we went uh, teenagers and of course then we had to work at the brewery. Every weekend and every holiday we were working in the brewery. This is something unique. Lambic Brewery is something that you can only brew in this region. So it would be very stupid to let this go away. So I took the opportunity then at the beginning, but I knew the brewery. It was very hard working here. Everything was manual. And also working with your family is not always easy. You can choose your boss, but you cannot choose your father or your uncle. So at the beginning, it was really tough. We are in the region of Lambic. Yes. And you know, you look at 10 years, you look at the growth of the area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, industrialization. I know down the road, you have a lot of construction going on. Do you see a change in the microflora? Let's look at even five years down the road mm -hmm. with more industries popping up. Do you, do you see that being an issue? Nature now is not worse than 20 years ago. Everybody was driving with lead in the gas oil and so. No, on that subject, in fact, it's, it's even better. And it's not because there is a construction of a building that it has an influence on the microflora. Climate, for example, has an influence because probably, as you know, uh, you can only brew lambic in the winter time when the nights are colder than 15 degrees from end of October till end of April. And we've heard that more than 100 years ago, they could brew from September till May. So uh, because now there is a warming up, we can brew in less months than 100 years ago. So that's maybe a problem, but not for immediately, I suppose, but maybe in a long future. I started here many years ago. As a matter of fact, when I was a little kid, five, six, seven years old, my father was working here already. He worked here totally in his career, 52 years. Every free time that I had on Wednesday, on Saturday, in the evening, I came here. I was at Lindemans. Every holiday I spent at Lindemans to give a little hand, to help with the bottles and everything. And then later on, I discovered the world. And then after a few years, I was back in Belgium. I still knew the family Lindemans and they asked me to work here. And then yeah, I said, yes, okay. And I started officially in 2001 to work here. First in the bottle lines and then after a few months I started in the brew house and Mr. René Lindemans, he learned me everything from A to Z about the brew process of Lambic. And in the past we were making one batch a day of 16,000 liters and then slowly I forced them to make 18 to 19 to 20,000 liters because we had the capacity in the kettles. They gave me green light to say you can do what you want. The production in the brew house is I think 300% more than in the beginning now and we are still growing. We have now about a capacity of 7.5 million liters of Lambics, young old Lambics in stock to make all the fruit beers. Because I only have seven months to brew Lambic. Lambic is a seasonal beer, so I start begin October till the end of April, begin May. 
Before we get into the brewing process, let me quickly describe the ingredients that go into making Lambic. The malt used to brew Lambic beers is pale and dried rather slowly, never kilned or cured. The use of raw, unmalted wheat is usually of a soft variety, and up to 40% of the mash is unmalted wheat, which sets Lambic brewers apart from other brewers. What's interesting to me is that the hops used in making Lambic are aged hops that have lost most, if not all, of their bittering. The hops are aged for one to three years. Old hops usually develop an unpleasant, cheesy aroma because of oxidation of the hop resins. The volatile acids responsible for that cheesy aroma are expelled during wort boiling, which is particularly long and vigorous for a Lambic wort. Now it's time to get into the brewing process. Typically, 30 to 40% wheat, and 60 to 70% barley malt make up the grist for a lambic brew. The brewing process begins when the milled grains are transferred into the mash tun and mixed with water. This mixture, termed the mash, is carried through multiple rests by infusion of hot water to reach different resting temperatures known as turbid mashing. A turbid mash is named for the cloudy, almost milky appearance of the wort it produces. Once the wort is pumped into the boiling kettle, the aged hops are then added at the beginning of the boil. The wort is boiled for at least three and a half hours to as long as six hours. The boiling serves a few purposes such as sterilization of the wort, reduction of hop aromatics and extraction of hop antibacterial compounds, and the extended lambic boil helps concentrate the sugar content. The hot wort is then pumped into the hop filter where the spent hops are recovered. The final step, which is unique to the brewing of Lambic beers, is cooling, aeration, and inoculation using the local microbial flora. From the hop filter, the wort is pumped into a cool ship, which is very wide and shallow. Because the wort is spread over a large area, considerable surface area is exposed to the atmosphere. The cool ship is typically in the highest part of the brewery, located in the loft, up under the tile roof. Outdoor air can enter the loft between the vented tiles and through open louvers. The wort is left overnight to settle, cool, and pick up the oxygen and the microbial flora that are required for the lambic fermentation. The next morning, between 5 and 9 a.m., depending on the weather, the wort has cooled down anywhere between 68 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 to 23 degrees Celsius, and is ready to be racked into the wooden casks where the fermentation starts after a few days. This is what I like about showing the process of how beer wine and spirits are made. A lot of it is not sexy at all. Drinking the beer, choosing the name, is sexy. This is not sexy. Our vision today is to be uh, creative with a very traditional product as Lambic. The method of brewing Lambic is very old. It's the oldest method, that's spontaneous fermentation. But we need to be creative, otherwise we will become old-fashioned and you will be forgotten on the market. So you, you need to be creative in order to get a new audience who will be curious to drink your beer. And for that, okay, you can produce your old beers as it is. But beside that, you need also other products that you can convince other people who otherwise will never drink an old beer, like the fruit lambics, like the botanical lambics that we brew also. You make them curious and you can get them also in your world of, of lambic. And once they do that, you can also tell the story of the lambic. So guys, it's been a long day here at Lindemann's Brewery here in Belgium, and I learned so much about the lambic making process. I wanna thank the staff for taking their time to teach me all about the process today, and I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you do, please subscribe to the channel. See you guys next time.